Hi, my name is Anthony Martin. Um, I'm the director of product development for Dialogic. I'm going to talk a little bit about Power Media XMS. Uh, it's a world class leading uh, media server with over a million ports deployed worldwide. In the demo, I've got a couple of colleagues with me on stage. And in the UK, we define a colleague in a live demo of somebody roped in at the last minute to share the blame. Uh, so I have James Gladhill and uh, John Gaffney. So before we get into the demonstration, I just want to talk a little bit um, about why we need a media server. You know, wh wh what does it do to help us within WebRTC? So we all know with WebRTC you know, about browser-to-browser, -browser, audio and video communication. But there's these, all these other different use cases where a media server can help us solve some of the uh, implementation challenges. So if I just pick a couple of these out, you know, if we look at connecting WebRTC to the PSDN, we have a codec mismatch. You know, we have sort of Opus on one side, and we have G711 AMR wideband on the other side. If we look about uh, video conferencing and, and audio conferencing, you know, when we're on, on a deploy, say maybe 100 or 200 or 500 audio conferencing, I get into things like automatic game control. If I want to record centrally for uh, contact center, you know, for financial organizations, a lot of them need that centralized call recording. So these are all examples of uh, you know, problems that a media server can help solve. Dialogic recently conducted a uh, impact survey looking at WebRTC and 65% of developers that responded to that, um, uh, sorry, 65% of developers that responded said that they needed help with rich medium uh, mixing and interoperability. Th did you say 65%? I did, James. Wow. <laughs> so, and, and this is where Media Server can really help. So then we're going to really look at the demo and what we're going to sort of look at. So rather than show you a screen share, I'm going to switch straight to the browser. So don't, you love that, don't you love that glare or that, uh, that flare there? <laughs> so what we're going to concentrate is on is that sort of video conferencing use case. I've just picked one of those many different problems that we can solve with the, the media server. And what we're going to demonstrate here is a number of different clients. So John at the end has an iPad, and he's running a, a SIP Bria client on the iPad. Um, James in the middle has his MacBook. I'm very jealous about. It's a lot better than my laptop. Sorry. <laughs> so uh, James is running uh, Firefox on, on the uh, MacBook, and I have a, a HP laptop that I'm presenting on the screen, and I'm running Chrome. So you can see I'm the top left here, and uh, you see that. So we can do a few other things here. Um, really, when we look at this, you know, you'll see a lot of examples of peer-to-peer -peer video, and you'll see examples of you know, multi-tile video conferencing. Some of the things are a little bit different about the way we do things. We're actually doing the mix on the media server and presenting it back. So whether that's so on the iPad, and I guess you'll take my opinion uh, that you can see uh, the video here, it's just not, not, not a one way, or, or on here, we're, we're doing that mix and delivering it back. So in that case, John's using H.264 as a video codec, and he's got G722 as his audio codec. Obviously on the browsers, we're using VP8, uh, and we're using a G711 codec within the browser. So, you know, we're doing all that transcoding as well as doing that video mixing. It also... I think, I think we should play a, a, a streaming video. Okay, I could do that. What, what if we wanted to watch a, a football game together, or a basketball game, or, or maybe do some live gaming, well, or I something guess, like that? I guess being good corporate guys, what I've done is I've queued up the Dialogic corporate video, so uh, oh. unfortunately... Boring, but uh, better, I guess. <laughs> okay. So what you can see now is I'm streaming a video into the bottom right-hand section. So we now have the three of us live, and we're going to be chatting. There's a bit of soccer here. I called it soccer. Come on, it's football, really. But you know, I'll, I'll pander to my audience. So we're streaming the, the, the video in. We're having a chat about it. Uh, it's looking good. So, Ant, this is kind of boring, you know, the, it looks like Hollywood Squares uh, or, or Checkers or something like that. Can you, can you do other things like, you know, uh, poster boards down below and a, a great big one? Or? That's a good question. I mean, we have the full capability to redefine how this looks. So, by very flexible APIs, you can effectively do layering over, picture on picture. We can arrange nine squares. 
We also have active talker detection, so you could effectively flip active talkers and have a single window. Or you could have one larger window with smaller ones and bring the active talker into the central. So all based off of APIs? Absolutely. OK. Completely uh, controllable. What about uh, like uh, recording or something like that? Is that, uh, is, is that important from a media server? Yeah, so as well as playback, we can obviously stream videos into the conference. We can also record the output to the conferences and play those back. Um, also, each conference participant can be a, a different level. So some, in this case, we're all uh, full presenters, but they may be, you know, a, another 50 people viewing this conference in a, in a listen-only motion. And what, what, if my, what if I had a conference and uh, I had high resolution, but somebody else was on low resolution like SIF? Would everybody be downgraded to just SIF or what? No, so that's a good question. So what we do is we take all the inputs. So you can see we have the uh, H.264 and G722 input from here. Uh, John, I think, is running in SIF, which is quite a low resolution. Uh, I think both of the uh, browsers here are at least running VGA. My Mac has high res. <laughs> okay. So uh, what we would do is we would take them all in, mix them, and then deliver back using the same codec and resolution that came in. So we would ex experience our high resolution uh, experience, and unfortunately John over there has to suffer with his SIF resolution. Wow, that's impressive. Yep. Can you show me how recording works? Okay, so I guess I'm going to click record, so if you want to do something memorable. Memorable? Ah! John could do a you know a strange, uh, strange uh, face did, or something. Did John like move? That. I didn't think I didn't think I saw John, John move there. John, you're pretty boring there. It's got to be memorable, yeah. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replay the recording into the bottom right hand square. Ah, what do we do memorable? Yeah, it's pretty boring. There you go. Yeah, well. <laughs> but it does do recording playback. That's cool. All right. So, uh, I mean, there's a lot of other things we can do. I could have played that back full screen. You know, if I really wanted to, I can also play the corporate video full screen rather than with the little squares. So there's a lot so of flexibility. Say, you can do transcoding between VP8 and H.264. Yep. You can uh, do uh, conferencing and not go to the least common denominator. Yep. You can play and record. I mean, record and playback and all that kind of stuff on the media server. Absolutely. Excellent. So rather than indoctrinate you all with the corporate video for much longer, we'll quickly go back to the deck. So just to sort of back up what James has just said, we've showed interoperability, interworking between SIP, WebRTC, uh, looking at transcoding with different codecs, be it audio or video codecs. We've done mi rich media mixing. You know, we've done play records. We've streamed videos into the, into the conference. VP8 to H.264. Yeah, we've worked with Chrome, we've worked with Firefox, we've worked with SIP rear clients. Dialogic's very proud to have been awarded the American Technology Award just last week. Uh, we, we picked it up and uh, we're very proud of that in the telecom sector. It's a very mature product with over a million ports deployed worldwide. Thank you for your attention.